why has every company who sent me an email for business also tried to make me download a Trojan horse virus? Thank you for keeping my trust issues that high. Hello everyone, it is your favorite shameless YouTuber again. I haven't officially made a proper video on my channel since like December? Anywho, I'm back, although I can't say I did anything productive in the five months I've been gone. Just like eat, sleep, TikTok, procrastinate. Oh, school! I went to school. That wasn't fun. Today is the day that a lot of you have been waiting for. In today's video, I will be sharing my shifting experiences with you. Just a disclaimer, please don't expect me to remember everything that happened in my desired realities or my waiting room. I can't even remember if I ate yet in this reality or what day of the week it is. I am surprised that I am even able to get myself back to my house once I leave it. Please go easy on me. Let's begin. So the places I've shifted to are 1. My waiting room 2. My Hero Academia 3. Diabolic Lovers, which I regret. You'll find out why. Places I still want to shift to are 1. Star Wars, as a Jedi general during the Clone Wars. 2. A steampunk society where I work as a graveyard keeper. 3. Fade Zero because there's a man I need to beat up. And 4. An Ultimate game because that <coughs> sounds funny. I don't know if you've ever played one of them, but I swear to god, the main character has the personality of a wet, moldy piece of bread. We gonna fix that, so we'll see how that goes. I'll begin with my waiting room because that is the easiest place to talk about. I've been there twice, not for long periods of time, just two or three weeks max. I have a butler, Sebastian, as you know. I'm pretty sure I talked about him multiple times before. He's a demon, by the way, and I've made contracts with him in two of my realities. Something interesting that I learned was that since there are infinite versions of me, there are infinite portions of my soul that are distributed to each me in those realities. Selling my soul isn't actually selling my soul. It's only selling that little piece of consciousness that is attached to that me in whichever reality I decided to make a contract in. This is all according to what he told me though, so it might be right, might not be. Don't take my word for it or the word of a demon. I personally think it makes a lot of sense, but before you go making contracts in any reality, just know, just a disclaimer, I am not advocating for you to go sell your portion of your consciousness to a demon or anything like that, okay? That's just what happens in my desired reality and my waiting room. Don't follow me, I'm a very bad influence. The first thing I remember was waking up in a big Victorian theme bedroom that I'd seen before but only in pictures and stuff that you've seen on Google. I got out of bed and I was panicking because I thought that I got kidnapped but you know looking back who would want to kidnap me? <whistles> Literally no one so I didn't think that through. I kept loud whispering like yo mom you there? I wasn't getting any response which was not helping my already building anxiety but in my head I was also thinking like hey this isn't that bad because even though my mother isn't coming nobody's coming so i mean it could be worse so with my one working brain cell i decided that it would be a smart and marvelous idea to get up and walk around even though i was barely able to stay standing due to my legs feeling weak because i was so scared i opened the door which was conveniently unlocked and i peered down the hallway i was like damn they might be criminals but at least they've got good taste i accidentally looked across the hall saw myself in the mirror and got so startled because not only was I wearing completely different clothes, but I looked different too. Like my face was still pretty similar, but there are things about me that I was like, that's when I started piecing things together and then time just started to slow down. If any of you have ever experienced due realization, you know that sensation of nothing being real anymore, I literally got hit with that and I felt like I got hit by a truck. I can't lie, after I realized that I shifted, I felt euphoric. I have never felt such joy, ever. Since I wasn't afraid anymore because I was like, yo bro, I shifted, this is my waiting room. I walked to the nearest door with the lights on and I peered inside. It was the office room that I scripted, here it is. And as I opened the door, I just saw Sebastian in all his glory just pouring a freshly brewed cup of tea. I'm guessing he sensed me because he didn't even turn around. All he said was, welcome master, did you enjoy your rest? I said, yeah, I guess, and he just ushered me to sit and drink tea. So of course that's what I did. We spent the next couple hours talking about many topics like his previous masters, places he's been. We played a guessing game. I kept guessing how old he was and I still haven't, get I still haven't gotten it right up to this day. 
I still don't know how old this man is. Eventually, we stopped talking and I was just dead tired. The sun was setting, but I wanted to go outside because I caught a glimpse of the garden that I scripted from the window in the office. So I said, take me to the garden, please. I think he was going to princess carry me, but I was like, that is absolutely humiliating. No, I made him give me a piggyback ride instead. We got to the garden and other than there just being roses and cool shaped hedges, it was very boring. So almost immediately after, like it took me five seconds, I just went, scan. I, there's nothing interesting here. Let's go back inside. Much to his dismay, he looked pretty irritated when I told him that since he carried me all the way down here. But it's okay, he still brought me back. I went straight to my room and I just flopped on my bed and went to sleep. And that was it. The rest of the day was the most eventful one because I just repeat the same thing every day. I would eat, I would shower, watch TikToks, listen to the music, and then sleep again. <laughs> and then I just keep doing that entire cycle for like three weeks until I left. He got so irritated with me because he's like, Master, why don't you get up and do something? Bro, I don't want to. Why do I have to do that? Give me one good reason why I should do that. And then I'd cut him off before he could say anything, so. Other than like eat, sleep, shower, repeat, I would make it a point to go and bother Sebastian whenever I could find him. Cause there are like a few other people in the house, like other servants and stuff, but I'd make it a point to go bother him. He does not appreciate it at all. If like he's serving tea and he leaves something, I'll take the spoon and toss it on the floor and just wait for him to come back. I'd be like, what? What do you think I'm paying you for? He'd be like, you're not paying me, master. I don't think he likes me as a master, but it's okay. I'll make him love me eventually. That's it for my waiting room. Next is my hero academia. This is gonna be quite long. I have to say though, it's my most exciting desired reality that I've been to so far. Here's a little bit about my backstory that I scripted. My name is Artemis Phantom Hive. I'm 16 and a first year transfer student from Canada. I have a twin brother named Apollo. Get it? Artemis and Apollo. But he's the equivalent of my twin brother in this reality. And he's in the hero support class with Mei Hatsume, which is class 1H. They're both insanely crazy, so it worked out. Well, maybe not for UA or their class, but it worked out for me and Azuku. Since they're geniuses, our support items are crazy good. I have two quirks, Omnikinesis and Wormhole. Omnikinesis is the ability to manipulate and bend matter, any type of matter, living or non-living. Wormhole is basically a special quirk that developed as an offshoot from my Omnikinesis ability. Since I can bend anything, I can also bend space and time. So what I do is I open up the equivalent of like a wormhole, and I can jump in and out of them as a way of teleportation or just like attacking. The enemy is like right here and I can teleport this side, attack them and then jump right back into a another wormhole and then pop out and attack them again and pop in, etc. For my drawback, all I scripted was something natural and boy was it natural. My drawback of using my quirk for too long is literally insomnia, like full on insomnia. If I overexert myself, during a fight or during training, unless I physically injure myself or have like apparent wounds, I won't feel anything until I'm exhausted and I try to go to sleep. I have insomnia in this reality too though, so it's not like it's an unfamiliar feeling. I've only stayed in the My Hero Academia desired reality for a couple months, so currently we're still living in our homes. We haven't moved into the dorms yet since the summer training camp attack hasn't happened. In my desired reality, I live next to Izuku with my mom and my brother. And let me tell you, our mothers are basically besties. They're always talking to each other, always gushing about the kids, which is me and my brother and then Izuku. And they're always going on about like how proud they are of us and like all this ushi gushi stuff. It's literally so embarrassing, but you won't ever catch me telling my mother that unless I want to get like a hairbrush thrown behind me. So like whenever they start going on this like Oh my god, I'm so proud of my um, kids rant. Me and Azuku, we kind of just slowly disappear and then dip. I shifted the day before the UA entrance exams. My family was moving in next door to Azuku, so I made sure to look for him, introduce myself, and tell him good luck. Even though I knew that both of us were gonna be in UA. Me due to special circumstances and him because he's literally the main character. The day he came back from doing his exams, he looked super depressed. And like, I know what happened. I know what went down during their exams. I was of course excited to see my favorite character living, breathing in front of me. But it didn't stop me from really feeling like super sad. I tried giving him encouragement and I told him not to stress on something that he said that he did his best in. I think he genuinely appreciated my comments and my advice because he 
still occasionally asks me for it if he's fixated on something. In the show, he's literally the therapist for every single person that he's literally just trying to fight. So I chose to be his little therapist. I honestly feel honored that he feels comfortable enough to talk to me about his problems because he doesn't talk to anybody else about them. He feels a lot of pressure of being the newest holder of one for all. He feels like if he even slips up a little bit, he's a failure. I told him that he needs to stop destroying his body for the sake of being a hero. At first he was irritated by what I said, but I think he's slowly coming to terms. Here are some random stories of things that have happened. The first one was Denki failing to cheat. So we were having a math test, right? And this dude, he wrote the answers down on his hands. And of course I was like, okay, well, whatever. People do that all all the time he was so he's like excuse me sir puts his hand up it's the hand with all the stuff written on it and he's like excuse me sir when i tell you that aizawa literally looked at all of us said hey class denki has a question everybody looked at him saw the shit on his hand i was just absolutely losing it and this dude the entire time he's confused he's like why are they all laughing at me i don't know buddy why don't you take a look at your hand the second story is of Toga sending me bloody knives in the mail because she saw me pull a knife out on a thief. I am not too sure when like she actually saw me because I actually pulled a knife on people twice. The first one was because there was a thief who was mugging like this random foreigner. Even though I'm a foreigner and I was like, nah bro, we're not having this. And he cut himself, right? So I just had the bloody knife after. But I like threw it away, right? So it could have been that. It could have been the time where the dude actually tried to mug me because I'm a foreigner. I took just a little bit of cement from the wall that we were next to. I manipulated it so it became malleable, put it into a rock shape and smacked him on the head. He went plop, knocked that dude out. There's still blood on that knife too. I don't know why there was blood on the knife. Maybe he mugged someone else before me. But yeah, after that, I started getting notes in the mail and I was like super suspicious. As I would take them out, it would always be a blood knife and they would always just have Toga with a smiley face and like two little pointy fangs. I forgot to mention this, but there was always a note that accompanied the knives. And it would say stuff like, you drop this, and it's literally a knife. Or another time, I see you like knives. Me too. Want to see my collection? No, I don't want to see your collection. Leave me alone. I don't know why she has an obsession with me. She has an obsession with Uraraka. She still has an obsession with Izuku. And now she has one with me. And I have yet to even meet her face to face. The third story takes place with my brother Apollo and Hatsume. I don't know why, but they thought it was especially my brother. My brother was, was the one who had the idea. And then Hatsume just kept egging him on to do it. So he thought it was a brilliant idea to take a microwave coil and put something else that um probably they already knew was not going to react well with it. And they blew a giant hole in the tech department wall. There's smoke alarms going off, fire alarms, everything, just bells were ringing everywhere. I was in the cafeteria when this took place and I, I walked all the way there along with the rest of the student body. And we just see them, they're covered in black like soot and they're just cackling like maniacs, even though they just blew a giant hole in the wall. I got so many glares, even though it was not my fault, and they got detention for two weeks. They weren't even sorry though, they were like, we're gonna do it again, whatever. Just um, make sure I'm not there at school that day, thanks. My fourth story is actually something that happened on my first day of school. I know, I'm not the best at having good impressions on people. Basically, I walked into class and I saw that Bakugo was picking on Izuku. And I hate bullies a lot. If there's one thing I can say I hate in this world, bullies. And so I went up to him and I shoved him and I was like, what do you think you're doing? And he's like, stay out of this, grandma. And I was like, what did you just call me, you stupid Pomeranian? And he dropped Deku and he was like, what did you say? And then we just looked at each other and just went at it. We ended up destroying the classroom. Aizawa was extremely mad. I ended up getting detention for the first month. I don't regret it though, but I did end up with two fractures. One was on my wrist because I kept punching him and the other one was on my calf. Both his arms got fractured though because I kept kicking him and I kept punching him. He had to just keep blocking. He couldn't really use his cork because I kept coming at him because it was just like basically a full blown fist fight except for like the occasional use of like a cork and stuff. We're still not friends. We're like the farthest from friends. We're not on Monoma Bakugo level though, but um, as long as he keeps picking on Deku, I'm gonna keep picking fights with him because that's just how it is. If Azuku's not gonna do it, I damn well will. Fifth story is Shoto. This man, he loves pissing Bakugo off. Just as much as I like picking fights with Bakugo, he likes pissing Bakugo off. There's one time we were training in the woods that's like next to UA and there's kind of a little cliff area 
And Bakugo was just screaming at him for, I don't know what reason he was screaming at him. Bakugo screams for everything. And he said, why don't you go jump off a cliff? And Shota was like, okay. He just nosedived right off the cliff. I was laughing so hard. I could not breathe. The class was like, Bakugo was like, grrr, and shocked as well. Like, he was fine. Like, it's Shoto Todoroki. He's fine. He does that a lot. Finally, Monoma and me get along very well. Personally, I never hated him in the show. I liked how he was, like, so quick to just knock Bakugo off his high horse. You know, during the sports festival. Favorite part. And his anger towards Class 1A is justified because, you know, his class is doing just as well as Class 1A. Maybe a little bit better in some aspects because they have uninterrupted training. But they're only focusing, like, the media and society only focuses on Class 1A because they're the ones getting attacked by villains all the time. I explained that that attention was unwanted attention. And, you know, me and other people in Class 1A have nearly died multiple times because of the villain attacks. I told him he, nobody should want to wish for trauma to happen to them. Trauma is something that impacts you for a long time. I don't think he's fully going to get what I mean though until the summer training arc when both classes experience literally nearly dying and then Bakugo gets kidnapped. But overall, he's a really good person. He's not always loud and obnoxious like we see in the show. He's actually quite composed and well-spoken when he's not around class 1A, especially when he's not around Bakugo. He's philosophical too. We've had multiple conversations where we talk about hero society and the line between being a vigilante and just being a villain. Overall, he's a really good person. Like, if you guys shift to My Hero Academia, I definitely recommend you go and talk to Monoma with no, like, prejudice in mind, okay? Genuinely, just go and talk to him and just see what he has to say, okay? Don't bring Class 1A or anything into this unless he, like, talks about it seriously first and don't bring up Bakugo and you'll be fine. Thought I should talk about training a bit. Training happens every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm grateful that I scripted myself to be like 5'7", muscular, and having a lot of endurance because they make us run the beep test every time we train. Then we do things like rock climbing and swimming, and then we have hand-to-hand -hand combat. It is absolutely exhausting. Like, I get that we're training to be heroes, but oh my god. It is so stressful. What's worse is that we're only allowed to pick our partners once every two weeks. Otherwise, it's randomized. And I, more often than not, end up with Bakugo as my partner. And our fights are always super violent since we kind of aren't fond of each other. I don't understand how the teachers blatantly know this at UA and if they still make us spar against each other when we both always come out with injuries every single time and have to go to the infirmary. That's about it for My Hero Academia. Let us go on to the one that I've been waiting for, Diabolic Lovers. If you don't know what Diabolic Lovers is, well, you are in for a ride. Basically, it is based on like a dating simulator game. This girl gets sent by the church to be a sacrificial bride for like, what, six vampires? Six vampire brothers. And um, she has the personality of like, wonder bread like a slice of just plain white bread let's make a moldy too so i woke up to the beginning of the anime which is basically i'm in this car sent by the church and her name's yui yui is in there too and she's there like oh my god i wonder where i'm going blah 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 sis doesn't even have the freaking directions she's just blindly going wherever these people are, are taking us so we stop in front of like the giant mansion or wherever we get out and the dude just leaves us. And I'm running after this man. I'm like, where are I? And he's not listening to me. He just drives off into the distance. So I'm like, we're off to a brilliant start already. That's great. I guess we have to go inside. So we're walking. I have like a stupid little suitcase. I have my smartphone. And then I have another flip phone from that era. It was like freaking 2009. But I hid my other one because I was like, there ain't no way. I already know someone's going to try and take my phone. Besides, my life app is on there. I cannot afford to lose it. So we knock on the door, completely silent. So I'm like, I right, there's no one home. Time to go back. Bye. This girl opens the door. She opens the door and I'm like, are you inviting yourself in? Are you inviting yourself in someone else's house? She's like, it's open because you opened the door. We had only been there for like 10 minutes and I already wanted to strangle this woman. So she's like, I'm going to go inside. And I'm like, you do that, okay? 
have fun. Have some real good fun, okay? I literally know what's going to happen. She's gonna go in there and she's literally going to get herself in so much garbage. So I wait a couple minutes when she goes in and I go and I hide myself behind the pillar because she's like, oh my god, I see a random handsome man sitting on a couch. Huh, what am I gonna do? I'm not going to be a responsible person and stay the hell away from him. No, I'm gonna go walk right up to him and peer very close to his face. So she gets trapped by him. He starts like freaking smelling her and then Reiji comes along the redhead's named Ayato Reiji comes along Reiji is very um sophisticated by the way he looks very good but he's also psychopathic which I um I don't want anything to do with do with that they take her down the hallway and I'm like oh stuff's gonna get spicy now and I run in and hide behind a pillar before they close the door so this meeting is going on and the entire scene starts playing out like how it um plays out in Diabolic Lovers except I'm there by the way you're probably wondering how did they not sense me They're vampires wouldn't they have like heightened hearing etc i scripted that i have supernatural senses and abilities too but i'm not a vampire i'm just a really lucky human being so they can't hear me they can see me if i'm obviously standing out but like they can't hear my footsteps and any everything because i i have learned the way of the ninja so this girl being absolutely not smart not even having one working brain cell decides to go and trip on air so she trips on air she scratches her uh, knee starts bleeding and of course they're vampires they're gonna start showing their fangs she's like oh my god you're vampires so what does she do she grabs her lovely holy bible and her cross and she's like may christ compel you and of course absolutely jack shit happens they're just looking at her like really are you done she's like oh my god i wonder why it's not working let me tell you, I was watching the scene unfold and I was trying to keep it together because of how embarrassed I, I felt for this girl. And I don't feel embarrassment at all. I wonder why a lovely plastic cross is not gonna work on vampires. So she runs out and they're all chasing after her because of course that's just how the first episode goes. And I'm like, no, I'm not staying here. This was a very bad idea. So I'm walking out when one of the dudes accidentally spots me and I'm like, so I started sprinting. The one that saw me is the one I never want to deal with. His name is Leto, and he refers to the girl as little bitch, little bitch, little bitch. So of course I would not want to deal with someone like that. I was like, okay, Fedora man, I'll see you later. And by later, I mean like never. See ya. So I ran out and I ran to this graveyard next to their stupid castle thingy, and I just hid there but of course they found me and before i could run boom knock me out so yeah and then i woke up in a bed so i wake up in this bed and i'm like okay it's going it, i'm not dead so i guess it's okay and it's pitch black and i'm like no something is off there is no way i'd be alone in this room just look at me i'm gorgeous kidding but like my blood is lovely and scrumptious and of course there is someone there i just see someone at the foot of the bed and i'm like ah! scream and this is the thing my scream actually scared them because they were expecting a nice polite like ah! mine was like oh it was like three octaves below what they were expecting so they literally just got so they were scared that I was scared and I was just losing it. It was um Ayato, the same stuck up dude who I don't like to. I don't like him. He's literally so full of himself. But anyways, because I screamed so loudly, the rest of them came and dragged him away because they're like, huh, are you trying to eat dinner first? I mean, that sounds so disgusting, but like they're vampires, right? I'm guessing he wanted some of my blood before everyone else did. But it's a good thing he didn't do that because if he got my blood first, he probably wouldn't have wanted Yui's, which meant that they'd be after me, which I don't like. I just want to live a nice peaceful life mind my own business you know so alas after that they kind of forget about me two weeks go by and like nothing really interesting happens to me of course I always end up stumbling into moments with like the main character and other like vampires and stuff there's a cemetery scene where a purple haired kid I can't remember his name he's like a little bit eh, eh, but they're kind of all like eh, eh. I accidentally fall into this underground catacomb and I'm trying to make my way out and I stumble upon him showing Yui all the brides that they've killed before like they're all just stuffed and they're all just wearing wedding gowns and stuff and I'm like uh, 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 what you know that meme which is like huh? that was me of course it ends with her not dying but Jesus 
Christ, that was scary. All these people are dead. They're not dolls. They're not mannequins. They were actually living people. And they're all dead. And there are dozens of them down here. That's great. That's awesome, man. And then for like the entire time I was there, there just kept being like mishaps of me entering into those main character moments by accident. There is a one incident that happened that suddenly all of these lovely vampire dudes were interested in me. This is what happened. So there is a moment where they go to school. I went to school too, right? Since I'm technically in high school with all of them. So I go to this school, Aizo and Yui, and they're going on the roof, right? I'm listening to them talk. And all of a sudden, he's like, you're mine. And um, she's like, what do you mean? I don't want to do this. And he's like, I don't care. You know why? And she's like, why? And he's like, because you're my woman. When I tell you, I could not suppress my laughter. I let out this unholy grunt of laugh. And um, I just hear dead silent. I'm like, oh, I just messed up really badly. So I'm like, okay, let me just vanish before um they arrive. And I turn around and man is there. And he's like, what are you doing? And I could tell he's pissed. And I'm like, uh, bird watching? <laughs> I'm bird watching. <laughs> it's the worst excuse ever, okay? Like usually I'm good at excuses, but like I was too busy laughing to come up with something good. So <laughs> he's like, bird watching, huh? I'm sure you weren't eavesdropping? And I was like, why would I do that? Like, does it look like I wanna interrupt your Romeo and Juliet session? And I shouldn't have said that, cause then that just gave away that I was there the entire time. And so he was like super mad with me. And I was like, um, so if you're not gonna do anything, I'm just gonna go to class now. So I'm walking and he just grabs me by the throat and just dangles me off the side of the building. A normal person who values their life would shut up. I did not do that. So he's choking me, right? And instead of, you know, survival instincts kicking in and, you know, trying to be like self-preservation, I'm like, excuse me, sir. Did you know that you're blocking my windpipe? <laughs> Did you know that that's assault? <laughs> I was wheezing as I was saying this because I thought I was the funniest person on earth at that moment. But um, he didn't think so. He wasn't amused in the slightest. But here's the highlight for me. So I'm getting choked out on the side of a building, right? This girl, instead of helping me, you know, not die, she decides to sink to the floor and just sob uncontrollably in fear. I was literally flabbergasted. What is she doing? I am the one about to take a one-way trip to hell. I should be scared. Anyways, I should have died there. Like, I, I know for 100% I should have died there. Because he literally just dropped me. I thought he was going to have a change of heart since, like, I'm kind of her friend, but not really. But he's like, nah, bro, drop. The only reason I survived was because the dude I really don't like, Leto. For some reason, man, I think he was, like, minding our business from a lower floor. He just caught me and then just brought me through the window. It was so fast, I didn't know what was happening. I literally thought I was going to die. I was like, okay, should I stay my stay for it, like, as I'm falling? Okay, so if you've watched the anime, you know that when they bite into this poor girl, it sounds like they're munching on a delicious Granny Smith apple. For some reason, because of this, I thought that getting bitten wouldn't, wouldn't be so bad. Well, hi, my name is Kristen. I'm 19 years old and I'm dumb. It hurt very much. I cannot explain how much pain that was. You know how some predators have a chemical that like is coated on their teeth. So when they bite into the animal, it gives them a sense of euphoria and causes them to relax. I also thought that would happen. That is not what happened. Apparently it had no effect on me. After this man saved me, I was like, thank you, oh my gosh, thanks so much. He's like, time for you to repay me. And I'm like, what? So <laughs> this dude just grabs me and just shoves me down on this desk. And I'm like, sir, this, sir, this is a Wendy's. Sir, this is a Wendy's drive <laughs> I'm not a good person to take when we're trying to survive against like a serial killer or anything. But I think he like, he found it amusing. So I was a little bit shocked, but he still bit into me. And um, I screamed really loudly again. One, I screamed because I was in shock. And two, I literally felt my blood leaving my body. It is the weirdest sensation ever. It is like a painful sucking kind of feeling. All I know is it felt so disgusting and I was just screaming. So I'm like kicking and hitting this dude. Cause I'm like, bro, get off of me. Get off me right now. But it's okay, he stopped because unlike Yui, who doesn't scream, doesn't do anything, because I was screaming and kicking, being just obnoxiously loud, a bunch of people came to check on me. And so they found me getting pinned down. So he had to leave me alone. I was like, ah, sucks to be you. But after that, it was like a living hell. 
I would be trying to sleep, someone would come in my room and try and suck my blood. I would be out walking in the hallways, someone would come and try and suck my blood. I had to be super careful. Once I cut myself, because I love playing with knives, right? Like no matter what reality, I still have knives with me because I love them. Cut myself. I had to run out of that mansion faster than Usain Bolt, okay? Because they were after me. This is why you don't romanticize vampires. They are scary, they are bad. You're literally livestock to them. And now I know this, and I'm not going back there, like ever. Maybe if I feel like torturing myself. The last major thing that I remember happening there was that in the anime, there was a day where the girl temporarily escapes, right? Because there's like some weird blood moon or something. It gets rid of their powers for that entire day, so they're regular people. The white-haired vampire, I can't remember what his name is. I think his name's Shu. Yeah. He's like, okay, leave and don't come back. I was like, Celeste, don't tell me twice. I'm gone. Goodbye. Hasta la way go. Sayonara. This girl, I'm like, come on, let's go. She's like, but I think I can change them. I'm like, what? You can change them? Shut up. Get your shit. Let us go. She's like, no, I really think I can change. Bye. I was like, bye. And then I made a mistake. I still had some humanity in me. I was like, it's okay. Fine, stay here. But... If you ever need help, just call me here. Here's my number. But do not give this to anyone. Do not tell anyone about me. I am gone. So I leave. I'm like staying in the hotel two days. And then I get a call. And it's her. And she's like, um, excuse me. Um, I think we need to meet. And I'm like, okay, well, why do you need to meet? She's like, I think, um, they might actually be bad people. Sweetheart, I wonder what gave that away. Was it them using you as a, I don't know, blood donation center? Was it them abusing you every day? Hmm, what gave it away? But regardless, I did not pry because I was like, it's okay, woman supporting woman. I will be there. I will come help you. She's like, okay. And I was like, okay, let's meet at this place. But she's like, no, 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 let's meet at this place. And you know, that should have been a red flag for me. This girl does not use her brain at all. There's no way that she could have come up with that strategic location. But me thinking, oh my God, she finally grew a brain. She has more than one brain cell now. I was like, okay, I'll meet up there, no problem. So I'm walking, I'm walking, I get there. I'm about to turn the corner when I glimpse a fedora hat and I turn around and I run. Cause who has a fedora hat? Oh yeah, that's right, freaking Lito, that orange-headed Why would you bring them here to find me? Why would you do that? Now what am I supposed to do? It's not that like moon thingy anymore, they have their powers, they can literally rip me apart if they want to. So I'm running, of course. At the back of my mind, I was like, bro, I this is not gonna go well, I'm probably not gonna make it. And you know what? I was right. I turn the corner, I'm about to get to the motel I'm staying at, boom, lovely fedora man, and I'm like, Greetings. He's like, so, um, what did you think you were doing running away? And I was like, uh, I don't know, getting away from your crazy ass? Like, <laughs> why are you running? Why are you running? I don't know, you tell me. And what did they do? They knocked me out, and when I came back, I was back in that stupid mansion. And I was so mad. They locked the door, but they didn't lock the window. As soon as I saw that it was locked and like my other exit was literally like attempting to take my life by jumping down. I was like, no, we're not doing this anymore. And I said my safe word and I came back here. I definitely felt like I was cattle the entire time. Like they looked at me and th you could sense that they were just hungry. Like is this what it's like being captured by cannibals? I hated every second of it. Like, of course, there were some times where I would, like, joke around and stuff. Literally one, nobody got my sense of humor. I nearly died because of it. The same dude who I hate most, Leto, he was the only one who, like, even had a semblance of, like, understanding my humor. So sometimes he would laugh, but he's still so psycho. Why would I want to be next to him or even near him? Yeah, that's about it for my, um, stories. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions regarding places I've shifted to, questions about the people I talked about, any background information, or stuff that I left out that probably seems like a plot hole that you would like cleared up. I have five different trains of thoughts in my head at all time. So sometimes I think I said something when I didn't, so it may seem like a plot hole or that like there's something missing. Just ask me about it and I will answer it. That's all for now. So I will see you next week. Upload will be on Friday, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you need any of my socials, they will be linked down below on my link tree. I have Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, of course, and a few others. I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.